Hello everyone, it's Dr. Locklear here, and I'm coming to you with Exemplar 39.A, and we're going to be talking about case management, which is a part of care coordination. In our previous lecture on managing care, we talked a little bit about the case manager, so we're going to look a little deeper into how case managers and case management uh, uh, coordinates and collaborates care or care coordination. So we want to analyze the case management as it relates to managing care. What is the purpose of a case manager? And we've talked about that a little bit on the other uh, recording. Uh, what are the key elements of a case manager? And explain the need for critical pathways in the case management process. So let's take a look. So what is case management? It is the integration, so involving, including, uh, they're part of the team. It's integrating, uh, integration of care across various disciplines. As we talked before, the case manager's kind of the lead, and so they work closely with the social worker and the doctors and home health agencies and things like that, and especially the patient. So it's the integration of care across various disciplines, through an interconnected, interprofessional approach. The goals of case management are to improve patient care experiences because we want them to have, a, of course, an experience that's positive that helps them heal and get them back on their feet as soon as possible. Decrease cost, so get them well and try to get them out of the hospital as, as quickly as we can. Provide options for patient decision making. So they're, again, including the patient in the uh, uh, whole aspect of what is involved in their needs. Do not leave them out. And improve the overall health of the population. Case managers are nurses, social workers, or other healthcare professionals who coordinate care for patients across disciplines. And so what are some of the responsibilities of case managers? They use assessment of the patient's strengths and needs. So they look at uh, not like a physical head to toe assessment, but they do look at that because they need to see if the patient is going to be able to have um, the ability to provide care for themselves when they get home. But they also look at, again, do they live alone? Do they need help? Are they able to stay at home? All those types of things. So they look at their home life, their family members or caregivers who help meet the needs of the patient. They coordinate uh, the patient care. Uh, we collaborate with other healthcare professionals to meet the patient's needs to provide cost-effective care and monitoring and evaluating patient progress towards mutually determined goals. And these goals are uh, mutual agreements between the patient and the healthcare team. Case management often involves use of critical pathways or standardized care plans that are developed for groups of patients with similar or predictable medical conditions. And I mentioned critical uh, pathways um, before. Uh, again, you come in with pneumonia and the pathway may say you, you can stay in the hospital five days and you should be well if you get X, Y, and Z treatment. Now, remember, it's just a pathway and a guide. All patients are individualized. For example, the care team may follow a critical pathway in providing care for a patient receiving a complete knee replacement, but may make adjustments to the pathway if the patient has a comorbidity such as COPD or dementia. And I mentioned that uh, before. Um, <clears throat> you know, this is a guide that, that helps insurance companies kind of prorate uh, how much money they're going to have to spend out for someone that comes in, for example, with a knee replacement or somebody with, you know, pneumonia or whatever. And once the patient surpasses the number of days allowed, then your documentation from the provider and the nursing staff and uh, all the other interdisciplinary team has to support a purpose and reason for the patient to continue to stay in the hospital. So what is patient-centered care? So the nurse as a case manager uh, takes a variety of forms within the U.S. healthcare system. For instance, 
with the patient-centered medical home model, or this is the PCHM model, a patient's primary care provider works with the patient and family to develop a personalized plan that addresses the patient's physical and mental health needs across the lifespan. In this model, the provider's office serves as the home base from which the patient can access comprehensive, preventive, acute, and chronic care services in a manner specific to needs, values, and culturally linguistic preferences. And, and with this home model going through the physician's office, it provides an opportunity for them to stay out of the hospitals because we know that that costs so much more. Uh, so that gives you an example here. It says provider-based case management also occurs in other settings. Hospital-based case managers plan and coordinate pre- and post-discharge care for patients with chronic or complex conditions. Uh, Community-based case managers work with patients in their homes to ensure they receive adequate care in the home setting. And then many insurance companies uh, and some large employers have case managers on staff to control the cost while obtaining better health outcomes. So with this model, Basically, we're trying to keep the patient at home and out of the hospital and keep them as well as possible at home. So regardless of the exact setting, approximately 89% of case managers are filled by the RNs. In order to become certified as a case manager, nurses must meet a combination of certain criteria, including academic preparation, which it usually requires a bachelor's degree or a master's degree in a health or human service area, and experiential clinical work. So they want you to have um, a vast background in hospital-based clinical type nursing. Nurse case managers help to coordinate all aspects of care, advocate, so there's one of our concepts, and coordination of care is one of our concepts, advocate for patients at each stage of care, and plan an overall strategy to address each patient's problem. The caseload varies depending on the clinical faculty and clinical unit, of course, because we want it to be individualized care, uh, with the case manager facilitating patient care, coordinating with the interprofessional team, and monitoring and evaluating patient outcomes. So, you know, again, here it's, it's a coordination of care. You're, the case manager is not the only person doing all the work. They have to talk to, of course, the patient, the family, and everybody that's involved in their care. Clinical decision making and critical thinking skills are crucial because you have to be able to assess and look at the whole picture and pick up again on those subtle cues. Uh, what does this patient really need? So these are crucial to the development and execution of a well-coordinated care plan because we don't want the patient to go home and have to come right back to the hospital the next day. The nurse case manager assesses the patient's needs in a holistic way to ensure that those needs are met and that the patient's independence and quality of life are maximized. We want to try to maintain the patient at an independent level. The nurse case manager also explores available resources to assist the patient with achieving or maintaining homeostasis and independence. This can include determining what materials or equipment that they need at home, for example, oxygen or assistive uh, devices. Actual and potential problems should be identified. Actual problems are problems that exist but potential problems are those that can occur and we need to anticipate for example, say this patient is going home and they have limited mobility, are they going to be at risk for skin breakdown? The nurse case manager is responsible for identifying potential coordination challenges and ensuring that those challenges are addressed during the development phase. For example, challenges may arise related to a patient's religious practices, cultural beliefs, and practices or use of complementary approaches. The nurse case manager assesses for any potential conflicts and works with the patient and the healthcare team to resolve them to ensure the provision of safe, appropriate care and the best possible outcomes for the patient. So, you know, it, it all points to the end result. You know, what is the, what is the outcome going to be? Okay, we've got, we, we want to make sure that this patient has as positive outcome as possible. Case managers must also ensure that planned care 
follow standard protocols or critical pathways that we talked about and evidence-based practice. You can't just say, oh, I think this is what they need. After evaluating the patient's care needs, the nurse care manager organizes the required components of care and develops the nursing care plan in consultation with the patient and the caregivers. The care plan then serves as the nurse's framework for care coordination. So we've got to have this plan of care. We've got to be able to uh, have something that all disciplines can go in and look at and see what the needs are of this patient. The nurse case manager initiates consultation with the interprofessional care team. Again, they are like the lead of, of this, of this uh, uh, care plan team. Recognizes the needs for referral and obtains necessary orders. So they do a lot of communication with the healthcare providers. As consultations and referrals are implemented, the case manager upstate updates the critical pathway and informs the other members of the interprofessional team. On an ongoing basis, the nurse case manager communicates with patients, family members, and members of the healthcare team to ensure that the plan is executed and continues to meet the patient's needs. Because again, communication is one of our concepts that's related to managing care. We, if we don't communicate, nobody knows what's going on. It is critical that the nurse coordinator monitor the plan execution and follow up with the patient family and team members when adjustments are needed. We need to evaluate. Uh, that's the last piece of the nursing process. We need to follow up. Uh, is it working? Is it not working? When necessary, the nurse case manager revises the care plan. Changes in a patient's condition and plans to discharge or transfer the patient are automatic flags that the plan must be updated. Say, for example, you go in for surgery and you get up to go to the bathroom and you fall and break your hip. Or, or you throw a blood clot and end up with a trach. Those are unexpected uh, problems. So the care plan has to be readjusted. The nurse case manager is responsible for documenting the original care plan and any modifications. So the case manager but uh, oversees that that care plan is done, but nurses and all the other disciplines can update uh, pieces in the care plan as well. It's not just the case manager's responsibility. So what are key elements of case management? Nursing case management organizes patient care by either uh, the diagnoses or the diagnoses related groups, which are your DRGs. DRGs standardize clinical diagnoses as they relate to care provision and cost reimbursement for patients with identified clinical uh, conditions. And there's a book called the ICD-9 code book and if you're ever a case manager, you have to be trained on how to use the ICD-9 code book. And for every diagnosis that patient has, it's listed in that book and it's given a number. And when the uh, case goes to whoever's paying for these services, where it's Medicaid, Medicare, or private insurance, they look up those numbers and it shows them exactly what the diagnosis is. And as a case manager, you do have to know what the ICD-9 code book is. Working within this framework, nurse case managers identify expected patient outcomes that should occur within a defined period of time and coordinate the interprofessional care necessary for patients to achieve the expected outcomes. Nurse case managers also ensure that care provided meets legal and ethical standards of professional practice. Remember we said you want to do what the patient wants, but it's got to be safe as well. Um, you promote best practices alongside cost effectiveness and uses principles of continuous quality improvement. Research suggests that case managers should be actively involved from the time of, of admission to facilitate patient outcomes regardless of the setting or point of access. So again, it starts on admission and it ends on discharge or sometimes once they go home, we still follow up. In many cases, the need for case manager management is identified based on the patient being identified with one or more of several high volume or high risk diagnoses, such as a total hip replacement on an orthopedic unit or traumatic brain injury in the emergency department. Those are some very high level uh, diagnoses. High risk cases include those patients with multiple comorbidities 
admission to an acute care unit of three days or more, or the need for uh, ventilatory support or home uh, health care, because these patients are hard to place. Patients who are on a vent, there are not a lot of facilities that will take them. For example, a patient with Parkinson's disease is admitted for suspected infection and deterioration of mental function, likely brought on by the infection. Over the course of the four days it takes to identify and begin to treat the infection, he loses some functional capacity, although his cognition improves with treatment for the infection. The case manager works with the patient, the spouse, and the care team to determine whether the patient can be discharged home with home health, some physical and occupational therapy, or if they should be discharged to a rehab facility. In summary, successful case management requires uh, several elements. A qualified case manager, so again, somebody that has um, a, a lot of training, somebody that has a, a lot of experience, someone that can work with this type of patient, as you see on the slide here, that's got these high comorbidities and they need um, special care at, at home. So, you know, you need somebody that, uh, if you've been a nurse a year or two, you really um, should not qualify for a case management position. You have to have a vast clinical background uh, before you can do this type of work. A dedicated interprofessional team, you've got to have a team that really knows their job and knows how to find resources and what, um, uh, that has good communication skills with the healthcare provider. Some nurses don't like to talk to doctors, but, uh, you know, we have to. Organizational support at every level, administration, medical, and support staff, a quality management system, and critical pathways for uh, patient care. And in your uh, reading here on page uh, 2627, it gives you a great clinical example. I would read over that but I'm not going to put that in the slide here. We may talk about that in class. So critical pathways, what are these? They're also known as care maps, critical maps, clinical pathways, or action plans. They provide a therapeutic plan of care based on evidence-based practice, and they help to direct clinical decision making because they are based on evidence-based practice. So it helps guide on what um, uh, is best for that patient for, for uh, rehabilitation or healing. These pathways are used in managed care systems to track patients' progress, maintain interprofessional communication, and help improve patient outcomes. So with these critical pathways, uh, you're looking at a way to uh, based on evidence, for example, the evidence said if you do this for this diagnosis, then the, you're going to have a positive outcome for the patient. So it's all based on research. Critical pathways organize standardized treatment plans into time frames, and the expectation is that the patient will meet outcomes as prescribed in the critical pathway. Even though the pathway is standardized, there's room for individualized variations because we know that care is based on the individualized needs of the patient or complications that may affect the ability of the patient to meet these outcomes in the specified time frame. Because like I said, these critical pathways do have time frames. Uh, if this, for example, if the patient develops delirium during the inpatient stay is an example they give you. Variances are noted for both time frame issues and are interventions provided to address either patient complications and or a patient's ability to respond. All members of the interprofessional team share a vested interest in caring for the patient. Ongoing data analysis of patients receiving care using a critical pathway can contribute to the body of knowledge and help foster improvement uh, when needed. For the unit or floor nurse working directly with the patient, the critical pathway serves as an outline. So it's a guideline and, it, and, it's, and it's a good guide. And these standardized care plans, they're based on evidence-based practice as well. And it helps us uh, identify certain interventions that would be really good for a patient with that specific problem. 
So it gives you an example here. The critical pathway might specify a time frame in which the post-surgical patient should be up and walking once the anesthesia wears off. If the patient is unable to meet the expected outcomes within the time frame, the nurse outlines in the critical pathway whom the nurse should notify. In this example, either the surgeon or the case manager, probably both. And the next steps to take in patient care. As mentioned earlier, the case manager tracks variances for patients assigned to the case management team. At some point, the care team may analyze variances, especially variances that occur regularly across the group. In the same example, if multiple postoperative patients are taking longer than expected to come out of anesthesia or to begin walking for following anesthesia, that issue will need to be examined and possible modifications made to the pathway. So again, you know, these are just guidelines, but they are based on um, evidence-based practice, and they do use these, you know, uh, to help guide you, you know, hey, this patient probably shouldn't be in the hospital no more than five days, but there are variances, and variances are those things that um, kind of are off the beaten path. It doesn't fit the standard. It's unexpected. It's a variable. Uh, medical diagnoses um, are some of the critical pathways, things that they can identify. Uh, anticipated interventions across disciplines, and it lists nursing, pharmacology, and therapies. Time frames for care in days, hours, minutes, or visits, and expected patient outcomes. All critical pathways should include the ability to identify and document variances and adjustments to the pathway. Because again, you know, care is based on individualized needs of the patient. So you need to understand that it's just a guide. It is not set in stone, okay? Critical pathways vary according to patient needs, agency protocols, or current best practices of care. Examples of research information related to the concept of critical pathways is found on the Journal of Clinical Pathways, and it gives you the site here. But this is a good journal too. Uh, it gives, uh, anytime you see journal of, that's always an evidence-based uh, type journal, and we should always use those. Uh, case management across the lifespan. Case management can yield positive results for patients of all ages and with any number of health concerns. And as you see here in your reading, it talks about um, pregnant women and children with disabilities, behavioral issues, and the older adult population. Some patients are more likely to benefit from case management than others. Here are some examples of such patients, such as high-risk pregnancy, children, and so forth, the ones I just listed. And so, as you see, these people need um, uh, specialized care. And so, a case manager may be able to help them find, um, you know, these type of things. Um, it, it's, it's hard to place somebody that has specialized needs, is what I'm saying. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's good to have a case manager because they know who to call. They know who to talk to. So it talks about at-risk uh, pregnant women, and it here is talking about, you know, working with this particular population of people, and you think, well, it's just pregnancy, but some of them, you know, they have health problems, high blood pressure, diabetes, uh, social or economic factors. Uh, they're not, they can't afford to go to the doctor, so they don't get um, uh, the right visits. They don't get their prenatal vitamins. They, they may smoke. Uh, case managers promote health of the mother and the infant uh, by educating them about pr adequate prenatal care, and appropriate referrals, and ways to even get to your appointments. The case manager educates women about important topics such as proper nutrition, proper exercise, perinatal mood disorders, because, you know, you can have um, issues with alcohol and drugs and mental illness and you know, all types of things uh, fall under mood disorders. Avoiding fetal exposure to these um, illicit substances. And it talks about here people that live in poverty or in abusive relationships. It talks about the benefits of breastfeeding. We, we know best, breastfeeding is best because of the antibodies and reducing the transmission of disease at birth. 
It says the case manager also plays a critical role in educating women about such topics as obtaining proper nutrition, exercise, and so forth, as I, as I just listed here. Um, you know, you want to make the appropriate referrals. And one again, one of the biggest things is if they're on drugs, get, let's try to get them in rehab, get them off the drugs. Um, can they even get to their appointments? What kind of services can we provide for them to, to get to their appointments? You know, that let them know the health department is free. They can go there. And then it talks about children with special needs. And so as a case manager, uh, again, these uh, resources for children are specific. And so when you're looking at children, you know, you're looking at uh, it, 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 are there facilities where children can go? There's not a whole lot. And so we have to do a lot of coordinating care in the home and who's going to help them in the home. It says many children sustain physical and or mental disability as a result of premature delivery, congenital diseases, birth injury, childhood illness, or some other cause. Case managers are a valuable resource for these children and the families, not only at the time of the initial diagnosis or injury, but for months and sometimes years afterward. For those children whose conditions can be remedied by surgical and other means, uh, such as heart issues and musculoskeletal defects. Case managers help plan and coordinate the medical procedures required so they can help, you know, these families um, maneuver through the system and find the right person that can help with these type of surgeries. They also arrange for the child and family to receive other services necessary to support their well-being throughout the entire treatment period, such as physical and occupational therapy, psychological counseling, uh, pharmacology and in-home nursing care. For children whose conditions will persist for the rest of their lives, case managers perform a similar set of actions. In addition to coordinating medical care and connecting patients and their families with available support services, they also work to ensure that the child receives adequate education and other accommodations throughout their childhood. This requires the case manager to engage in advocacy efforts on behalf of these type of patients, and these can be lifelong. And, and, and this can be case managers that actually work through like social services and places of that nature. And then it talks about um, patients with behavioral, intellectual, or mental health disabilities. Patients of all ages may be affected by behavioral, intellectual, mental health disorders or disabilities that limit their ability to participate in school, so they may need to be homeschooled or in a special school, obtain or retain a job, so they may need job training skills, engage in self-care, live independently, or engage in any number of activities of uh, daily living. After working with these individuals to determine their unique limitations, case managers can help each patient formulate a set of realistic goals and expectations, then reconnect the patient with any number of resources necessary for meeting these goals. For example, uh, individuals and their group counseling, vocational training. Vocational is like skills training and teaching them how to do certain skills. Uh, certain workshops, nutritional services, disability groups, home, group homes, housekeeping services, and, and so forth. They list numerous ones here for you. And then the older adult. Case management is often a critical component of care for older adult patients. One reason is that many older adults experience multiple and or chronic health conditions that require ongoing care and coordination. Uh, as you get older, you're more susceptible to um, chronic conditions, heart disease and kidney disease and diabetes and things like that. Uh, stroke patients. For patients like these, case management helps, pr helps promote continuity of care, prevents duplication of services, and ensures that patients are not receiving therapies that counteract or otherwise work against one another. In this way, case management helps promote better patient outcomes while simultaneously fostering more efficient, cost-effective use of healthcare services. And so, uh, you know, the case manager is, is looking at, when you look at all these age groups, what is the best resource for this patient? What's going to keep them the most independent and the most functional? 
Case management is also an increasingly common aspect of end-of-life care for many older adults, as well as patients of any age who are affected by terminal illness. By working closely with these individuals and their families, case managers help ensure that their patients are able to achieve death with dignity, and that is very important. People want to die with dignity. This means that the patients are empowered to choose which treatments they wish to receive without feeling pressure to undergo potentially painful and or expensive treatments. Um, and, and I'll just, you know, as you and I start to get to know each other this semester, I use a lot of my own experiences as examples in class. And so uh, I, I will do that a lot. But uh, just to share, you know, some of my feelings on this, because I am an older person and I've been around a long time and I have told my family, you know, at my age, if I were to get cancer, I would go through surgery, but I'm not going to do chemotherapy or radiation. At my age, I just don't feel like that's what I need to do. And so, you know, that's what they're talking about here. You know, people don't want to feel pressured to go through procedures that they don't want to go through. It also means that patients are able to die in the place of their choosing and or in the presence of loved ones. Often the case manager's first step in ensuring patients' wishes are met is to speak honestly with the patients about their health and impending mortality. And so, you know, as a case manager, um, you know, for um, older adults, you know, you, you, you are looking at, at a whole different aspect of topics of discussion uh, and, and one being end of life care. And that is difficult, but we want to make that process and transition as easy as possible. So hospice care will have case managers and social workers that help with that process as well.